welcome to the Virginia Hospital and Healthcare Association's Patients Come First podcast series. Podcast episodes are available on VHHA.com and on popular podcast hosting apps, including Apple Podcasts, Amazon, Spotify, and many others. We're a member of the Public Health Podcast Network, Virginia Audio Collective, and the Family Podcast Network. Podcast episodes also air each Saturday at noon and Sunday at 10 a.m. on 100.5 FM, 92.7 FM, and 8.20 a.m. across Central Virginia, 16.50 a.m. in Hampton Roads, 105.1 FM and 10.50 a.m. in Lynchburg, and Wednesdays at 1 p.m. on 93.9 FM in Richmond. Please send questions, comments, feedback, or guest suggestions to pcfpodcast at vhha.com. That's pcfpodcast at vhha.com. I'm Selena Lore, and today we're pleased to be joined by Dr. Fauzer Siddiqui, Director of the Sleep Center at Satara RMH Medical Center, who joins us for a conversation about her career, her journey from Pakistan to the United States to practice medicine, and more. But first, welcome to the show, Dr. Siddiqui. Thanks for being with us. You're very welcome. Thank you for having me, Selena. So it is our custom to start each episode by getting to know our guests better. As we noted, you are the director of the Sleep Center at Centara RMH Medical Center, as well as a consultant, neurologist, headache specialist, and sleep specialist. You have also been a neurology preceptor at James Madison University and a volunteer tutor in the community. I imagine those professional details are one part of your unique personal story. So if you would, let's begin with you sharing some other things you think people should know about you. Yeah, so... I am originally, as you said, I'm originally from Karachi, Pakistan, and I did my medical school from my home country, and I was training in internal medicine there while doing internal medicine. I came across neurological disorders and and developed my interest in neurology and also in sleep medicine. And in order to pursue my career further, I came to the United States, and the journey from here was, you know, training in neurology in Ohio and in um, New Jersey for uh, sleep medicine. And once I uh, I completed all my training, which took several years, I came to Virginia to find a job here in neurology and sleep medicine. And I've been here since 2010, working in those roles as a neurologist, headache and sleep specialist. And as I in, you know, came on and started practicing here in the community for the years. Uh, you know, my responsibilities grew till um, I assumed the directorship of the sleep center, and I've been doing it for several years now. And my work mostly involves seeing patients in the clinic for uh, sleep and medicine and neurology, and then uh, doing some hospital work as well. So that's been going on for several years now. Awesome. Thank you so much. And that ties into our next question. So for the benefit of our listeners, we invited Dr. Siddiqui to be a guest on our show after reading an article about her journey from Pakistan to the United States and the Shenandoah Valley. You mentioned this, but as I understand it, you worked in internal medicine in Pakistan, which is where you cultivated an interest in neurology, which is part of the journey that brought you here. So would you tell us about that and what attracted you to specializing in the nervous system as a clinician? Yeah, absolutely. That's that's one of the passions that brought me all over from my home country. The brain is such an intricate organ. It controls everything in your body from head to toe. And just, uh, you know, studying the brain and its functionality, its various connections, synapses and uh, neurons, and, and then its function in different areas of the brain and that affecting different areas of your body in itself is very intriguing. It's a very intricate uh, organ of the body. Uh, not that others are not, but this is one of the most intricate. And, you know, when you synthesize, uh, when you see a patient who has neurological disorder, you have to actually synthesize a diagnosis and come up to a place where the you can localize the lesion, where this um, brain problem is coming from in the brain. And that in itself is a very interesting activity and that made my neuro- neurology interest even more deeper. And so I'm, you know, kind of graduated from my internal medicine interest into neurology. And and in that path, I came across sleep medicine as well and, and came to know that, you know, we spend about one third of our life in the state of sleep and how sleep is restorative and how sleep is is there to just rejuvenate the whole body to start working back again the next day. And similarly, how improving your sleep improves your whole body and brain function. And so then those two combination together, neurology and sleep, makes my passion much more for taking care of my patients. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. 
And the process of leaving the nest, so to speak, is perhaps a common experience for many people as they take fledging steps in their professional lives. For you, that involved a more involved journey of traveling around the globe to pursue a career as a physician, acclimating to a new culture, and leaving family behind. This path brought you to Ohio, like you mentioned, for residency, and then ultimately to Harrisonburg. Would you tell us about that experience, which I imagine came with real challenges as well as pleasant surprises? Absolutely, yeah. <clears throat> Both are very true, real challenges and pleasant surprises. So when I came here, my father and my mother both were an integral part in my pursuit to do my career. And they really did encourage me that, you know, if you want to do something which is not available in your country, you know, you can go ahead and pursue that. And so I came here by myself and, and then I started with a, initially with a research position and then gradually, you know, from there I found a residency and then to a fellowship. But during that period of time, um, my father, I would talk to my father and mother every day and they would just encourage me that uh, don't give up, you know, things would happen. It's not like it, it all happened within a year or so. It took me several years to get to the point where I was in a stable place that is like a residency and that, you know, you have a clear path in front of you. But during that period of time, you know, my parental support was there. My friends, I made new friends around here and their support was there for me as well. I was in New Jersey. I, I found uh, new cultures there as well. And some of my my support system was uh, always there for me, uh, especially with my parents there with me all the time. Thank you. And that leads perfectly into our next question. I was going to ask about your father, who I understand played a critical role as a support system, even thousands of miles away as you pursued your dream. Would you mind telling me more about that? Yeah. So my father served Pakistan Army and he had that, um, you know, military mindset that, you know, you have to go get him whatever you want. You want to, or you, if you set your aim to it, you will, you want to want to get it. And so he, he really did support me through my, through my journey, through his words of encouragement. And he used to say that you should have steel nerves and rock determination. And I always remember that, that, I mean, to have steel nerves and rock determination, that's what you need to get to your aim and get to your, you know, final journey and destination. My mother, on the other hand, was always there with, an, uh, with her emotional support for me that, you know, making sure that I, you know, ate my meals regularly and <laughs> did, did the regular things that I was supposed to do. And she's still an integral part to, to my, uh, you know, to my journey now as well. But yeah, and my father was a, a, a very critical part and my mother too. Wonderful. Thank you so much. So let's talk about your current work. You specialize in neurology, sleep, and headache. Many people know mm -hmm. about the importance of getting eight hours of sleep each night. Tell us about your mm -hmm. current clinical work and the patients you treat, as well as your observations on the overlap between neurology, sleep, and headaches. I'm very fortunate to have this combination of speciality for my patients. As we progress into future more and more, we see that as the population age, we are seeing more problems with uh, cognitive changes, cognitive decline, um, memory issues, and that has also a very clear correlation and association with sleep. So if you're not sleeping well at night, if you're not getting good hours of sleep, which means at least seven to nine hours of sleep, which is the requirement of our body, then um, you would not have good daily function of a uh, uh, you feel tired, fatigue, you may have problems with memory, focus, concentration, and short-term memory as well. So they both become very integral to each other, and treating one improves other as well. So as we uh, see a you know, unfortunate rise in obesity epidemic and overweight epidemic, we see a lot of sleep-related breathing disorders such as obstructive sleep apnea and other sleep apneas. And so when we treat those, we improve their nighttime sleep and daytime function and also their cognitive functions as well. Similarly, headaches are very common now with all the processed food and, um, you know, sodas and diet sodas and those kind of things increases the incidence of and prevalence of headaches in population and treating them with improving their uh, diet and exercise and, again, improving their sleep improves their headaches as well. People who have sleep-related breathing disorder would wake up with headaches too, and improving their sleep would improve their headaches. So it's just like a, a, a very intricate connection of all these three specialities together that help, uh, if you address them all, you help the patients much more. 
Wonderful. Thank you so much. And thank you so much again for being with us today. Before we conclude, we do have a tradition on the Patients Come First podcast to ask our guests a pair of fun personal questions. To keep things interesting, we have a list of 10 mystery questions. So please choose two numbers between 1 and 10, and I'll ask you the corresponding questions. Okay. All right. So 6 and 4 and All right. 4 and 6. Number 4. Which, if any, of the following things do you consider most plausible? Bigfoot, the Loch Ness Monsters, or UFOs and aliens? If none of those apply, but you believe in something else along those lines, please share it. I I do believe in UFO and aliens. (laughs) Nice. Me too. (laughs) (laughs) And number six, in the hypothetical scenario that you had one-time access to a time machine with limits, you can either travel 100 years into the past or 100 years into the future. Which direction do you choose and why? Oh, wow. Can I choose both? <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, both both would be very interesting, you know, 100 years before. Yes, I would want to. And I do, oh, my God, yes. <laughs> but, yeah, if I really have to pick one, I probably would want to do it, go in future. Awesome. Thank you. And that will bring us to the close of another episode of the Virginia Hospital and Healthcare Association's Patients Come First podcast. If you like what you heard, please make sure to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts and subscribe so you know when new episodes are released. And we want to once again thank our guests for joining us today. So thank you. Thank you so much, Leah. Thank you.